What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Tuesday, December 28th edition of DraftKings Tournament Plays presented by No House Advantage. I'm your host, Adam Scherer. You can follow me on Twitter at ShipMyMoneyDFS. And as a reminder, all new users to No House Advantage receive a $25 deposit bonus using the code AWESOMO. Today, we're going to take a look at five of the best tournament plays on DraftKings. Pay attention to news throughout the day. We are getting plenty of late-breaking news in the NBA these days. Ownership projections are likely to change. Player projections are likely to change. But for right now, looking at five of the top options on DraftKings, coming in at number five, De'Aaron Fox only projected for about 5% ownership with about a 9% chance of being in the optimal lineup. He's only $8,000 in a favorable matchup against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Fox played about 30 minutes in his first game back uh, last time out, but that was also a game where the Kings were blown out. They had said before the game that Fox was not on a definitive minutes limit. So seeing him get 30 minutes in that game, it's likely that he plays a few more minutes tonight. He hasn't been great this season from a fantasy standpoint, at least compared to, to previous seasons, but still offers plenty of upside in a favorable matchup against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Coming in at number four, Daniel Gafford, projected for 10% ownership with an 11% chance of being in the optimal lineup. He's a $4,700 center on DraftKings. He's averaged 1.03 DraftKings points per minute this season. Typically, he splits minutes with Montrez Harrell, but Montrez Harrell was added to the health and safety protocols today, so he will be out of tonight's game. Rui Achimura also out tonight. There's plenty of center minutes available for Daniel Gafford to pick up. Even if he only plays 28 minutes or so, he projects as a strong option, but in games this year where Harrell has played without Gafford, Harrell's averaged about 34 to 35 minutes per game. There's no guarantee that Gafford sees that same sort of run, but there's also not a backup center behind him. So we could certainly see Gafford get a ton of minutes tonight as long as he's able to avoid foul trouble. Coming in at number three, Giannis Antetokounmpo, 15% projected ownership, 16% chance of being in the optimal lineup. It's difficult to prioritize Antetokounmpo tonight, given some of the other options on the slate. We have Nikola Jokic, we have LeBron James in a fantastic matchup against the Houston Rockets. There's a lot of other places that you can go to, but that drives down the ownership on Giannis, and he is still the best per minute fantasy producer in the NBA outside of Nikola Jokic. So getting him at relatively low ownership against a very bad Orlando team, there's blowout risk here, but the game is in Orlando. And there's also just a very good chance that if the game is a blowout, that Giannis played a, a huge role in it. So getting him at lower ownership than some of these other guys makes him pretty appealing in tournaments. Number two, Jordan McLaughlin. Projected for only 9% ownership right now, 24% chance of being in the optimal lineup. That ownership number certainly could go up as the day goes on, but there's also a pretty wide gap there in terms of optimal percentage versus ownership percentage. He got the start last night, played 32 and a half minutes. Now we have a bunch of Minnesota Timberwolves players clearing health and safety protocols, but their head coach said that it was extremely unlikely that any of them would play tonight for conditioning reasons. This means that McLaughlin's likely to start again. He's not a bad fantasy producer on a, uh, a per minute basis, and he's likely to play 30 plus minutes again tonight as long as none of the Minnesota regulars actually do come back. One spot to pay attention to is Patrick Beverly. Uh, if he returns to the starting lineup, he would potentially uh, re remove McLaughlin, uh, and that would be you know bad for, for McLaughlin's minutes. But um, if we assume that Beverly sits, not really sure if he was included in Chris Finch's statement about guys being unlikely to play. Um, but he did miss yesterday's game, and if we assume he sits today, then McLaughlin's going to look very good. And coming in as the number one option, Jalen Noel, 48% chance of being in the optimal lineup, 35% projected ownership. He's not as influenced by Beverly. Uh, still, if Beverly were to return, Noel would not look quite as good, but he played about 34, 35 minutes off the bench yesterday. Even if he plays a little bit less today and you only get around 30 minutes, he's still a high usage, um, high upside guy that is going to play a big role uh, with the second unit because Minnesota is still extremely shorthanded. So he's going to be very popular tonight, but doesn't appear or currently isn't projected to be as popular as he should be given his chances of success. So to recap right now, the top five tournament plays on DraftKings, number five, De'Aaron Fox, number four, Daniel Gafford, number three, Giannis Antetokounmpo, number two, Jordan McLaughlin, number one, Jalen Noel.